Welcome back. I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Mike Wright, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2014 with the Center Joint Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure. Oh, we're glad to have you here. Uh, tell us about yourself. Tell us, you know, tell us where you're teaching, what school, and and subject. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm at uh, Center High School. It's the only uh, traditional high school within the district, and um, actually started there. This this will be my 31st year when I when I start in the fall. So I started when the high school first began, when it uh, became a unified school district, and they added the high school. So pretty much have seen it from the ground up, and you know was able to participate in building a lot of programs and coach sports and led field trips and got to do uh, you know just about every aspect of uh, of the teaching job there and really enjoyed it. You've been at the same school all that time? Yeah, yeah, all oh. 30 years. Amazing how the, the time clicks by. <laughs> you must have seen a lot of change come around you during all that time. Yeah. Not yeah, only was, in the school, but in education itself. Yeah, it's kind of um, funny you mention that because we I was just thinking about how the pendulum really kind of swings back and forth as far as educational methods and uh, with some of the, the new changes with Common Core and the Next Generation Science Standards, I, I see it kind of pivoting back to more of a focus of uh, you know, inquiry and, and student involvement rather than a lot of uh, kind of memorization and factoid based things that we were sort of stuck in for quite a while. Uh, how do you see that shift um, enhancing education, especially in the sciences? Yeah, um, it's actually started in with our AP uh, biology program, which I teach uh, biology and AP biology now, and uh, the AP biology curriculum recently changed, and there's much more of a focus on uh, students doing science, which I think is really a, a huge leap forward. Um, before, lots of times you'd be doing more um, kind of canned labs where the results are pretty well predetermined mm -hmm. and I don't think the students got a real feel for what really goes into science and research. Um, so this gives them, I think it's going to give them a much better taste of what research is, is like. They're going to have to do more designing of their lab activities and collecting data and analyzing it, which I think will hopefully equip them a lot better for, you know, careers. And, that, and that's basically what the Common Core calls for, is kind of a deeper understanding. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like the way, it seems like things are meshing pretty well with uh, Common Core, and they have uh, some pretty good emphasis on technical reading and writing, and then with the next generation science standards and uh, um, the College Board rewrites of the AP curriculums, everything seems to be coming together, and at least my feeling is it's really heading in the right direction again. Mm -hmm. So it's refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems like the sciences are really getting a lot more attention, especially with you know the STEM classes and and kind of the um, increased focus on you know, math and science technology. Yeah, yeah, that's a, another component. It's, I've been real fortunate. I've been um, working with UC Davis. They had a, a National Science Foundation grant, and so I've been working with them part time for the last decade. And it was uh, the Center for Biophotonic Science and Technology, and that really was their focus is... Okay, I have no idea what that means. What does yeah, that mean? Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> when you mentioned biophotonics, it's basically utilizing light um, to interrogate uh, tissues and okay. cells. It's mostly medical applications with Davis. So a lot of neat microscopy techniques and, and spectroscopy and, um, and treatments. There's things like photodynamic therapy where you can treat cancer using light and chemicals and using the light to activate them. But just a, a wealth of uh, kind of new technologies. And so it's been fun to share that with the kids and, and let them get a good taste of what the research is really like. Do you think that with this increased focus on, on the sciences and, and engineering that we'll really see more interest from the kids to kind of pursue that? Because we really are in need of you know, some, more high, some more high quality instruction, instructors in that area. Oh, yeah, desperately. Um, yeah, I really hope so. I think, uh, like you mentioned, with, with more emphasis on it, more focus, I think um, you know more students will see that as a viable option for you know advanced um, education or for careers, and you know with the, my own students I've seen that um, with the, the exposure they were able to get through the um, the Center for Biophotonics we had a lot of guest speakers come in they visited a lot of research facilities and I think it really helped whet their appetite for pursuing science mm -hmm. and I've been able to see a lot of those kids go on now after they graduated and they're you know they're uh, moving on and it's, it's fun to watch. Yeah, it's inspiring to them. Yeah. So, so you teach AP courses where obviously you've got some pretty high, highly motivated students in there. Yeah. Um, 
What about the other lower level sciences where you've, you're really trying to motivate a kid who just thinks, oh, science is just not my thing, I don't, I don't know if I like this. What are some of the things that you do? Uh, what are your tricks of the trade to, to motivate these types of students? Yeah, well, I, th I think you know people are, are kids and everybody are basically curious. So I always try to you know hopefully tap into their inquisitiveness, curiosity about things. Um, so we try to do a lot of lab activities and have them you know develop their own hypotheses about you know what what's going to happen. And I think if you can kind of draw on that, you know hopefully tap into their curiosity, then they'll get on board a little more. And also, I'd like to make them aware that there's, you know, other professions. You don't have to go on and get a PhD to be a science person. You know, there's um, careers at all levels in the field of science, and, and a lot of opportunities for kids that are maybe not as good. Maybe they, they struggle mathematically or with uh, some forms of academia, but maybe they've got really good hands-on skills and yeah. and uh, could work, you know, very well in a technician level position. And also maybe letting them know about the practical applications of science, uh, everyday usage and things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, especially with all the, um, the technology that's available now, every little contraption that the kids have, you know, the iPhones or iPads or whatever, um, and all the video games and, and computer programming, um, you know, techniques that are being used. I, I think uh, they're exposed to it in pretty much every facet of their life now. And so do you find in that aware. regard that you get a lot of students who, while maybe science isn't their thing, they may be a little more sophisticated technically than, than they used to be? Yeah, that's what's funny. Um, in the computer end of things, I'd say that's definitely the case. You know, a lot of times the kids are quite savvy with computers, but I'd say one of the things that started to dwindle is um, the hands-on, like tear things apart, build things, or, or being able to diagnose problems with you know, some sort of uh, equipment that you're using. Mm -hmm. That, I think, has waned a little bit. And that's what I'm hoping with uh, the Common Core and Next Generation Science Standards and more emphasis on, on building and doing and, and actually do, you know, being involved in the science. Hopefully those skills will come back up. Well, and when you think about uh, the needed emphasis for more career technical education as well, mm -hmm. um, and to think that it's not, you know, just, it's not necessarily an auto mechanic type of career, but there, there's, there are a wealth of, of professions to follow. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a, and the technology is just embedded in everything we do now, so whether it's mechanics or, or uh, electricians or anything else, there's just a, a lot of nice careers that could be pursued, and, and still at the same time you're, you're in science. So is there a certain philosophy that you, that you have? I mean, obviously you're a very experienced teacher. Is there any kind of one guiding mantra that you kind of follow throughout your career? Um, I think, I remember when I first started teaching, it, it, it's, you know, my very first year it was, it was more me, them. And mm -hmm. I, I realized that approach just isn't gonna work. It, it's stressful on them, it's stressful on me. And then eventually to work collaboratively and you know, try to, to show them that, that science is interesting and to kind of come on board and to have fun with it. Because um, I, I like to have fun and I think you know, having fun doesn't mean you aren't learning. And to be able to incorporate those two aspects, I think is probably one of my underlying philosophies mm -hmm. or whatever, is to make sure you can get, get them engaged, uh, show them that it's not painful, it can be fun, and then once again, you know, tap into their curiosity. Science is not painful. That's right. That should Doesn't be your have to new be. mantra. Yeah, because lots of times <laughs> you, you, you get that message, you hear, oh, math is hard or science is hard, but um, that's not really the case. I mean, it, it's a chance to answer a lot of questions. So do you have any students in your class that you think might be you know, potential teachers? And if so, how, how do you kind of guide them or try to influence them? Um, yeah, yeah, there's, there's uh, every year, you know, you have uh, a fair number of students that come in and are interested in teaching. And the um, biggest thing I think they need to, to do, or I try to tell them, is you know, find a content area that you enjoy. Because uh, for me, I love biology. I actually majored in wildlife biology, uh, natural resource science at Davis, and worked oh, with yeah. the Forest Service prior to going into teaching. And I knew that was a passion of mine. So that, I think, translated over into teaching biology you know, real easily. So I want them to find something that you know, they enjoy, and then take that joy and pass it on basically to the next generation. Let the kids see that you know, whatever topic it is is fun, and that you can learn a lot from it. And, you know, even make a career out of it. Well, obviously, uh, 
you've had an influence on a lot of people in your district because you've been named a, a Teacher of the Year. We've been speaking with Mike Wright, who is the 2014 Teacher of the Year for the Center Joint Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks.